In November of 2014, Amazon Web Services introduced a tool called Lambda, which is a serverless computing service that enables code execution without the need for server provisioning or management. It's actually this idea of removing server maintenance from one's responsibilities that made Lambda a very, very popular tool among software beginners. But Lambda's popularity ended up attracting some unwanted attention, like Denonia, the first publicly known malware to target AWS Lambda. If you are an IT professional, you'll be interested in this because I'll cover how it works, how it's deployed, and how it operates. But most importantly, how you can protect your code and your customers against it. My name is Elias. I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. You see, Lambda is built on top of Firecracker, an open source virtualization technology that basically creates super lightweight virtual machines, also called micro VMs. Here's a rough idea of how it works. When the Lambda service invokes your function, an isolated execution environment based on Firecracker is then created. It's this execution environment that manages the resources required to run your function based on the configuration you specified beforehand, such as memory that you gave it or the maximum execution time. It also provides APIs for your functions to communicate with its environment. The function's runtime communicates with Lambda using the runtime's API. Extensions communicate with Lambda using the extensions API and logs are provided through the logs API. As for storage, each execution environment provides from 512 megabytes to 10 gigabytes of disk space in the slash TMP directory. Now, the second most important thing I want to overview before diving into this novelty virus is what AWS calls the shared responsibility model. In a nutshell, AWS managed services operate in a way that makes security and compliance a shared responsibility between AWS and the customer. AWS is responsible for the security of the cloud, meaning AWS takes it upon itself to protect the infrastructure that runs its services. This infrastructure is composed of the hardware, the software, networking, and facilities that run AWS cloud services. But the customer is responsible for security in the cloud, right? AWS takes care of security of the cloud, but you as a customer, you are responsible for security in the cloud. Take Amazon EC2, for example, a service categorized as infrastructure as service, right? Well, EC2 requires the customer itself to perform all of the necessary security configuration of the service, meaning customers that deploy an Amazon EC2 instance are responsible for the management of the guest operating system, including updating the OS that you use and security patches on it. Any application software or utility installed by the customer on the instance, the configuration of the provided firewall, what we call security groups, on each and every instance. It's a little bit different for abstracted or fully managed services such as Amazon S3 or Amazon DynamoDB and also AWS Lambda. For these services, AWS operates the infrastructure layer, including the operating system. And all customers have to do is access the endpoints to manage their data. All right, now that we understand a little bit more about how Lambda functions work, we can talk about this new malware that has been recently discovered by security researchers at Cado Security, a cybersecurity forensics company. Here is what we know so far. The Nonya is a 64-bit executable virus developed in the Go language. It is named after the domain it connects with, gw.denonia.xyz. It is technically a crypto miner. That's a software that allows the mining of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum on computers and servers. Now, once the Nonya is up and running, it runs a modified version of XMRig, an open source Monero mining program. XMRig uses the single writable folder in a Lambda environment, the slash TMP that we mentioned beforehand, to start from memory. And then the executable connects to a Monero mining pool using the IP address received from the DNS query on port 3333. 
Now you see, XMRig in itself is a completely legitimate open source application that utilizes system CPUs to mine Monero cryptocurrency. Unfortunately, some parties generate revenue by infiltrating this app into systems without users' consent. This deceptive method rose to popularity following a crypto jacking spike in mid-2017, if you remember, that has impacted almost 15 million people across the globe. Back then, the campaign attackers targeted Jenkins, Oracle, and Apache servers. But according to security researchers, XMRig code has been modified again, and this time, it's targeting Lambda functions. What's strange about Denonia, however, is the fact that its deployment is still a mystery. Denonia hides its command and control domain and traffic using a novel evasion strategy based on address resolution, making it harder to identify using old techniques while actually enabling communication with other servers easily. Unfortunately, no one has been able to locate the attackers behind the Nonia. Not yet, anyway, because they left behind little to no forensic evidence. So it's still unclear how the virus got into AWS Lambda systems. Cado Security, the cybersecurity research company that discovered the Nonia, hasn't found a technique yet, at least they hadn't announced it. But they think it involved compromising AWS access and secret keys, then manually installing malware into hacked AWS Lambda installations. As a result, Cado experts believe the cyber criminals behind such attacks have advanced cloud-specific skills and are capable of taking on complex infrastructure. Although if you ask me, once I have your root access credentials, then I can take care of your whole infrastructure. Doesn't mean I have advanced skills of whatever. Now, Lambda has been around for less than 10 years, right? Serverless technology is still relatively a young thing. This means that security precautions for such services are frequently disregarded or sometimes even completely overlooked. And I also believe the shared responsibility model is still somehow somewhat misunderstood. Yes, AWS takes care of securing the infrastructure, but we as customers are still responsible for managing our own data, right? Using encryption options, for example, for more security and, and even rotating these keys that we use to encrypt our data, rotating them regularly. We are responsible for classifying our assets. We are responsible for using IAM tools to apply the appropriate permissions. In a follow-up statement, AWS insisted that the actors did not breach Lambda via a vulnerability, saying, and I quote, the software described by the researchers does not exploit any weakness in Lambda or any other AWS service. The software relies entirely on fraudulently obtained account credentials, and thus Denonia should not be classified as a malware. The report also added, because it lacks the potential to acquire unauthorized access to any system on its own. Now, it was after that that the security researchers admitted that although the malicious program is not limited to Lambda, it can still pose a threat to it since Lambda serverless environment is a Linux micro VM built with Firecracker. And I want to take a step back here. Although this first sample is fairly harmless, you know, it only runs, only <laughs> runs a crypto mining software. It demonstrates how attackers are using advanced cloud specific knowledge to exploit complex cloud infrastructure, which in itself is an indicator of more potential future attacks. So how can you protect yourself against the Noia and other potential Lambda focused attacks in the future? Well, yes, Lambda is becoming more popular and yes, serverless setups are easier than ever. Most of us use, you know, a framework like serverless framework or SAM, the serverless application model to build our apps. And I actually have an end to end series where you can build your first serverless application using SAM. So just click on this to watch it. Now we rely on these frameworks to build our applications and these frameworks promise us to handle the infrastructure so we can only focus on our business logic. And by doing so, in my opinion, that we entrust other parties with the security of our infrastructure. So we definitely have some catching up to do in terms of security. After all, cloud security is one of the best paying jobs in 2022. 
And you can check out also this video to learn more about that. Now, even though the method used to deploy the Nonia is unclear at this time, it is critical to take adequate security steps to prevent it. So here are a few things you could do right now to protect yourself. First of all, I want you to use a strong AWS root account and password and keep your root access credentials safe. I don't even know what my passwords are, to be honest. I use a password manager to generate and rotate these keys regularly. I don't even need to remember my password while doing my daily tasks. And also I want you to avoid using the root access when you are doing your daily tasks, right? Instead, I want you to use it only to establish an AWS IAM admin user account or to carry out access and account management tasks. After that, please log out of your root access and use the admin that you just created. I also want you to enable multi-factor authentication, MFA, on your AWS root account, so you will always receive a notification on your phone and you will have to accept or deny when someone is trying to access your root account. I also want you to delete your AWS root account access keys if you already have one. If you must retain it, please, please just make sure to update the access key on a regular basis. Also, you never, I mean, okay, this one, this one is obvious, please bear with me, but never give out your AWS root credentials, you know, or access keys to anybody. I know it seems obvious, but it doesn't hurt to repeat and make sure your data is encrypted. And the last thing I would advise you to do is to always make sure that your operating system and your software is also patched. You know, that lowers the risk of being infected by malware while working with AWS. And all these are in line with AWS's shared responsibility approach, which include, as we've mentioned before, AWS taking care of and protecting Lambda itself while businesses and customers are responsible for safeguarding their own content and functions that execute on the service. If you like this video, you will want to watch this one where I go in details about the best cloud certifications to have if you're looking to start a career in the cloud in 2022. I hope this video helped you understand more about the Nonia and let's continue the discussion in the comments below. Let me know what you think more attacks will happen in the future. Make sure to leave a like and to subscribe. And that's all we have today. Thank you for watching and peace out.